All right, that, my friends, is a very, very happy sound. As a matter of fact, there's a woman in that video, and I really haven't talked a lot about this on the show or on my site because it's a personal story. It's my life. You see, back in December, my mother was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. I became her primary caregiver, the person who was in charge of everything that was going to be happening with her health. When the doctors at the Mayo Clinic told me that I should just take her home, have her do her bucket list, there wasn't anything else that they could do for her, well, let me just say, that was an unacceptable answer for me. So I did the research, and I took her to MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And that was my mother ringing the bell for the end of her SBRT and chemotherapy as she prepares for surgery that will actually cure her of her pancreatic cancer. I didn't know anything about ringing the bell until this. As a matter of fact, I didn't know a lot about cancer until having been exposed to this with my mom. Now my husband jokes that I've earned my honorary oncology degree. Well, I think I kind of have actually. But the doctors have really been tremendous. They've taught me so much about what a poster is. And one doctor in particular, Dr. Fogelman, he actually taught me how to read a PET scan. Crazy, isn't it? I mean, he put a scan on the screen and said, come on, Kim, find the cancer. Let me teach you how to find the cancer in a PET scan. I know what having a CT scan is, with and without contrast, the different types of chemotherapy, what goes along with it, the side effects, the drugs that you should be taking for anti-nausea. And it's astounding to me the progress that is being made in cancer therapy. A particular interest to me is something that they call proton therapy. Proton therapy is different. It's really powerful technology, high energy protons. You remember protons from school, right? Oh, come on. I mean, unless you failed chemistry, you remember that protons are everywhere. The number of protons in an atom defines what the element is. For example, you have to follow me with this. Carbon atoms have six protons, hydrogen atoms have one proton, and oxygen atoms have eight. So the number of protons determines the chemical behavior of the element. So if you've got trouble with cancer, let me tell you something. These high energy protons are gonna go after it fast and hard. Well, with the right technology, of course. But here's how it works. When aimed into a single beam, protons are like highly targeted radiation dive bombers. So instead of radiation bombs exploding and hitting all kinds of unintended healthy tissues, these high energy protons penetrate only the cancerous tumor itself. This is really amazing technology, folks, because it limits damage to nearby tissues. This is great news for the cancer patients. It's bad news for cancer. Because let me tell you something, proton therapy success rate is taking the medical world by storm. And talk about high demand. There are only 26 proton therapy centers in the United States. Let me tell you something. While my mother was getting radiation treatment at MD Anderson in Houston, Texas, I asked one of the doctors, hey, you know, I've been reading about these proton machines. Do you think I could actually see one? And he's like, sure. That was Dr. Taniguchi, by the way. He arranged everything for me. And the tech there is amazing. The machines controlling these powerful protons are enormous. And the amazing staff that operate these machines are tech savvy to the nth degree. They're so incredibly precise. And I really wanted to learn more about this, how you can literally lasso a bunch of high energy protons and then target them right into a tumor and then wipe out that cancer. Well, I got all of that and more in this Commando On Demand podcast, and I can't wait to share it with you. Cancer is not particular about who it chooses as its next victim. And one of the things that I've learned is that the more you know about treatments, the better off that you are. You have to study. You have to keep on top of this. You need to be an advocate. And you really have to listen to this podcast. You're not going to believe all the cool stuff that I discovered on this field trip. But before we can get all into that, a special thank you to one of our great sponsors who helped make this podcast possible. Okay, welcome back. And before we visit the lab, I want you to meet Dr. David Grosshands. Dr. Grosshands is an associate professor with the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. 
He's also the adjunct associate professor of pediatric radiology at Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. All right, he treats adults and children who need proton therapy. Most of his time is spent on research. He has a special expertise in particle therapy, including the use of, all right, you ready for it? Here comes your new phrase of the day, okay? All right, I, I know you can handle it. Are you ready for it? Multi-field optimized intensity modulated proton therapy, or let's just shorten it up, IMPT. David investigates the biological effect, variability in proton therapy, DNA damage, and radiation effects on non-replicative cell types, it's like neurons. He's done a lot. He's involved with in vitro and in vivo radiation, as well as neuroscience. He's into worldwide studies that include heavier particles such as helium and carbon ions. Okay, so while the rest of us are watching football on the weekends thinking we're having a great time, let me just say something. Not this guy. And we have a lot to learn from him. So first off, Dr. Grosshands, give us a little history, please. When we started in 2006, we were one of only five centers, so it's not been widely available. But we jumped in because we think that it has a real potential to improve outcomes for patients with cordoma and other tumors. And then from there... Fast forward to 2016, there's been an explosion in the number of proton therapy centers, and it's because people really believe that this is going to be a better therapy. It's not come without controversy. It's very different than, a, say, a new drug that might not be as effective, but could cost far more than that. And the reason is, it, like I said, it's expensive. Gantries is what we use to direct the beam around. So this is an expensive thing to build just because of the, the sheer magnitude of it. All right, I've seen the gantries. They're huge, sometimes three stories tall. And up to this point, the whole proton therapy field has been, well, I guess you'd say it's been pretty controversial. So proton therapy, it's been a controversial thing, but the reason why there's been so much investment in it can be summed up by a very famous radiation physicist. If you don't treat a normal tissue, you can't have a side effect in that normal tissue. And that's what's so interesting. It's so common sense. Don't touch the normal tissue, and the normal tissue does not experience the side effects from damage. But why is there such a controversy? Why it's been so controversial is patients that we've treated historically. I don't treat these patients, but you know a lot of proton centers do. Things like prostate cancer, where it's a very indolent disease. Some patients will die of their disease, but a lot of patients will die with their disease. So in the case of proton therapy, it's not the treatment that kills the patient, it's the cancer itself. I know with other conventional treatments, there's always a debate about that. Are there certain cancers where proton therapy just really shines? I think for proton therapy, one of the success stories has really been cordomas. I know a lot of people wonder this. What about insurance companies? I mean, this has to be expensive. Do they cover proton therapy for cordomas? I have never had a patient with cordoma denied because I think the evidence is pretty substantial that this is a preferred treatment with excellent local control and progression-free survival. Progression-free survival. Okay, those are pretty strong words. So in every case so far with proton therapy, the cancer retreats, you guys and gals are fighting it back. It doesn't get worse, which is really impressive. So why is proton therapy so successful? It's really because you have to give very high doses of radiation and the ability to stop that radiation beam allows you to spare some of the normal tissues which are right around these tumors and therefore you can deliver this higher dose to a larger region. So if someone has cordoma, what becomes your goal? Or I guess you'd say, what is your challenge? You have a very large target and these tumors can grow very slowly and can get really quite large. And you have to cover all that. Anywhere where the surgeon was, you need to give at least some radiation dose there to hopefully sterilize any micrometastatic disease. It gets to be tricky stuff. You have the brainstem, the optic chiasm, which is the vision pathways. There's also other sides of the brain, the, the temporal lobes, which are involved in learning and memory. A lot of high value real estate, I call it. And you know, proton therapy, we think is really ideally suited to be able to give these very high doses of radiation and you really got to give it to the whole tumor area you can't skimp on it there's evidence that if you do skimp on it and you start to lose coverage it's much more likely that the tumor is going to recur what is some of the latest technology you use in proton therapy 
We do have new tools, even at our Proton Center here, our MRI simulation unit that we now have, which has really proven, at least in my hands, to be a really valuable tool. What we used to do is, after we do that CAT scan with the mask on, is we take the MRI and electronically fuse it to the, the CAT scan. And the MRI really shows us in greater detail anywhere where the tumor could have been in all the normal tissues so we can know what to treat and what not to treat. But there's a, you, anytime you're fusing something like that, there's always a little wiggle room. There could be a little bit of air. But if you do that MRI with that mask, you can be much more precise, I think, in how your confidence in your treatment planning. Now, David, I know your center in particular is pioneering some really successful types of proton therapy. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? In our center, there's a couple things that we've become famous for. One was being one of those first five proton centers in the U.S., and we've been really the most active. But what we did was we invested in a new technology called scanning beam proton therapy, and I want to talk just a little bit about that. Sure, go ahead. Regular proton therapy is kind of like a big can of spray paint. You have a big beam and you shape it with hardware on the sides. With scanning beam proton therapy, you use a small beam of protons, but you change the energy and and use magnets to scan it around, so you're kind of painting it in, so it's more like an airbrush approach. And what that really allows us to do is you deliver one spot, but then you can continue to paint in those spots as you move through the tumor. And what that really allows you is conformality, so you get that radiation dose that's really shaping right around where the tumor tumor is, and you get it not only at the far edge of the tumor, but also at the the edge that's closer to where the beam is going in. David, would you share that story of the brain tumor patient, the one whose tumor dissolved, just to illustrate how cutting edge technology might work for us? And then also, our listeners want to know everything. Explain how it works in everyday English, please, so this way we all understand came to us, he was having a lot of pain, and we said, okay, we have to do something. So we treated him with proton therapy, and about six months later, he came back, and the original tumor, that whole front half of the tumor had essentially melted away, which isn't something we typically see with chordomas, something that responds that quickly or that asymmetrically. Why could that be? What we do in the lab is we look at how effective is a proton beam compared to a photon beam. Some very basic physics. Protons stop, photons or x-rays do not. Protons are little charged particles, so I kind of say they're like ping pong balls. Um, You spin them, and at some point they're going to stop, and they deposit all their dose without delivering any dose beyond that. Whereas photons are kind of little packets of energy that um, pass through the body, depart some energy, but then continue to pass through the body and eventually will um, exit the body. And what we're learning now is that far edge of the proton beam, where all those protons are stopping, it actually has more of a biologic effect. So there's more cell killing at that far edge of the proton beam, where more cells are being killed at even a lower radiation dose. And so what we can do is, in collaboration with our radiation physics colleagues, we can go back and look, where were those far regions of the beam? Turns out they were right in that area that melted away. So we think that this is something that we can capitalize upon. Now, if you want to think about how this might be, you can look at what happens in an individual radiation particle. What damage does it do? And you can look at this atomic level. For x-rays, they kind of deposit some dose, but they can kind of shoot off to different areas, and they're much more clustered, they're much more compact, and there's much more of them. And so how can we do that? Again, if we go back and use that scanning beam proton therapy, we can now start to play around with where the proton beam is stopping and come in from different angles and try and put all that energy right into where the tumor is. And this is what we're doing. We're actually starting this at first of all places in pediatric patients, but I think Cordoma is really an ideal place to, to move into with this as well. Okay, that's amazing to literally manipulate and direct these microscopic, powerful protons to cover tumor is incredible. Now, we want to know what you're really excited about, something newer, maybe even something that you're just researching right now. We have protons, and now I'm going to throw something in here called carbon ions. If protons are like ping pong balls, carbon ions are like bowling balls. They impart an enormous amount of dose locally. And if you look at what happens at the DNA level, if you have an x-ray track or even a proton track, you nick some of the DNA every once in a while. If you have a carbon ion track, that DNA is just broken in half, and there's no way the cell can fix it, and that cell is destined to die. Our colleagues in Japan are actively treating patients, including chordoma patients, with carbon ion therapy. There are now centers in Germany and Austria and elsewhere throughout Europe that have these carbon ion centers as well. And we are hoping that we can adopt this technology here as well. And there are several other centers in the U.S. that are looking at this as well. David, I appreciate you sharing your time with us. I know you're so incredibly busy. God bless and keep up the great work. 
We're trying to make the best outcomes we can. I appreciate it. Just FYI, chordoma is a rare type of cancer that occurs in the bones of the skull base and spine. It is actually a sarcoma. All right, don't get crazy if this technical stuff is a little over your head. You have to know a little bit about this because this is where cancer treatment is headed. Heavy particle therapy, high energy particle therapy, something called carbon ion therapy. And just as you heard, some cancers are responding amazingly well to it because sometimes the tumor will just melt away. And the best part for everyone is very minimal side effects. We're going to be talking more about that, so stay right where you are as we say a quick thank you to one of our podcast sponsors. All right, welcome back. When you're looking at a big proton therapy machine, it can be very intimidating when you're inside your face is strapped down with a mask or in the middle of this giant spinning cyclotron or gantry and you have to hold your breath when they take the images it's not pleasant but still patients say it's way more pleasant than the side effects they've come to know and hate like nerve damage neurological dysfunction breathing difficulties feeding tubes nausea secondary cancers and other very unpleasant symptoms who needs them right I've been so fascinated by proton therapy that I was really super excited that I could take a trip to visit Lee Chamberlain at the University of Texas MD Anderson Proton Therapy Center. Now, Lee's another person there at MD Anderson. He's the education program coordinator. He actually coordinates proton training programs for physicians, dosimetrists, and physicists. And I do have a confession to make. I didn't know what a dosimetrist was either when I went there. I had to have Lee explain it to me. And when I met one, I was like, oh my gosh, you're a dosimetrist. Symmetrist. And of course, the young man looked at me as if I was crazy. It takes a whole team when somebody has cancer, not just your family, but also the people that help in the therapies and hopefully the potential cure. MD Anderson, Texas, one of the few centers worldwide offering these types of proton therapy to patients. They have this awesome track record of success with brain and skull, prostate, liver, lung, head, neck, esophagus, breast, gastrointestinal, gynecologic, and central nervous system cancers. And of course, they treat lymphoma, pediatric sarcomas, and other rare tumors. Okay, you ready to go in? Because I'm going to have you accompany me on this tour. You're gonna to be like that fly on the wall, okay? And I wanna give you an idea of the sounds of the machines, the staff, the tech, the discussions, the things that we had talked about. And I'm gonna explain everything that was going on when we get right back. So just join me right now on the tour. So we are here uh, setting up the stereotactic uh, body radiation treatments. Uh, this is for pancreatic cancer. And we're in the command center. So uh, the patient is back here. We can see her with video cameras and there's uh, two-way audio. And so we have different views all the time. And you can see that's the linear accelerator that's swooping around. And what is that doing? So when we turn that on, it generates the x-rays and it sends the x-rays in the precise location. How much is a piece of gear like that? It's a little over a million, one to two million in that ballpark. It's this giant, almost a, a ton of equipment that can stop on a dime and treat a tumor within a millimeter precision. Wow. So we take a CT scan and it pops up here. And what we do here is then we use the CT scan during the planning for the treatment, we put them together and we make sure everything's aligned. So you see up there, Mm -hmm. The different colors? Yeah, so we have a little LED box on her body. Yes. And that's telling us how she's breathing. Oh, I see it going up and down with her breath. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So it's an approximation of her breathing. We tell her to take a breath and hold. Those were the, the lungs you say she has of the Olympic diver. Yeah. Oh, no, she, she does a good job. So, you know, um, she, all she has to do is keep it right in the green. It's in the green. And then she sees that box in her eyes, right. in the, the goggles? On the right, that's what she sees. Oh, I see. So it's instant feedback, but she's got her breath in the right location. So uh, patients like that. You know, our goal here isn't to have a physical challenge. It's just to keep the tumor from moving around. So yeah, we, we just approved the CT scan, so... A lot of checks and balances, huh? 
Yeah, so it's it's like a rocket launch here. Um, <laughs> we, we check things 10, 20 times, and once it's all set, then we're go. So, so do you only do this with pancreatic tumors or just about any tumor? Uh, it's with a special procedure called stereotactic radiation. So just like the name implies, we're being very, very precise. So we do this with liver tumors, with lung tumors, with brain tumors, spinal tumors, anywhere where we have to be extremely precise. We're normally very precise anyway, but this we're saying here that we're within two millimeters or less. So yeah, I see. You have a picture of the patient. We're a patient, a picture of the patient. And then basically we have this graticule here that this is where we're aiming. This is what it looks like here. And what are describe. the blue, what are those blue lines? So over these, there? Are, these are some of the, this is her stent, and these are some of the gold seeds that we put in. Oh, I see. Okay. It, they're a little harder to see here on this side, but so I'm kind of aligning things by the spine. Everything's looking pretty good. There's one CM shift in the left. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Yep. Okay. So here's what we planned, and then we are aligning it to the tumor in real time. Oh, I see. And so when we did that, and the bony structure, it's off by a centimeter. Each one of these ticks is a centimeter. I see. It's, a, it's, it's about there. So it, this is just a sanity check. So yeah. is this something that like you could just leave to a computer, or you really need human interaction on this? We definitely need human interaction on this because uh, the, the software and the computer only knows what we tell it. I and, see. And so it, here we have to make sure we're, the computer won't know precisely where we're aiming or maybe some of the other aspects of the treatment. And so, you know, this is something that we feel humans are going to be irreplaceable. This is one of these arguments about AI um, where can a computer do what a physician or a human does? But the way that physicians look at it is we're looking at what computers can do to help us be even better. Right. So I think this is an example of that where we have really fancy computers here that help us be more accurate in our treatments. Um, so I, that's how I prefer to frame the shift in technology. Uh, how can computers help physicians do our job better? So I signed all the ports, so I think... So now it's time to push the button? I don't press any buttons, actually. I... It's funny because this screen was highly sophisticated. Oh yeah. That screen almost goes by like 90s, yeah. AOL days. Yeah, about 6 and 306. So everything you can see in this reading trace here, you can even see a little the way her diaphragm goes up and down, how it's it's kind of this this mountain, this peak. Right. You can even see. Um, so you have yeah. do you have to do you have to time it in between the breaths? Um, we 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 give her a command and she follows it. Um, okay. So, okay. Oh, I did. I did it. Okay. Confirm. So everything is good. Whenever you're ready, breath in and hold. You can tell she's oh, I can tired. See. You can see how it's flowing. Yeah. It's moving around. But that's kind of what we use it for. So you can see she's. Correct. I and then we use that to tell her when to, yeah. to take a break. What do you do if somebody can't hold their breath? Oh, we probably wouldn't use this no. technique. No. Uh, they only need to hold the breath for a few seconds to make so it. So they should be able to do that. Oh, she's fine. Oh, she's more than fine. She's great. Have breath in and hold. I don't know if you could tell from the audio, but what was going on there was truly incredible. People who were once told that they had cancer suddenly had hope and people were getting cured. They have signatures all on the walls at MD Anderson. People saying thank you and other people saying I love you. And it seems like even more people saying thank you, God. Okay, there's always that question on everybody's mind. Is this a treatment for me or for a loved one? I am not a cancer treatment counselor, but I can recap this in a nutshell so that you'll understand the basic technology. This is a non-invasive treatment best used to treat a localized tumor where cancer has not spread to other parts of the body. Also, if the tumor can't be removed by surgery, proton therapy may be an option for you. It uses ionizing radiation targeting a tumor with a beam of protons. These charged particles damage the DNA inside the cells ultimately killing them or stopping their reproduction. 
cancerous cells, they don't like it when their DNA is attacked because they divide fast and they have a reduced ability to repair DNA damage. These protons, I'm telling you, they're pretty neat workers. They make very little mess in the tissue and the beam does not broaden much. It stays focused on the tumor's shape and delivers only low dose side effects to surrounding tissue. Tissue closer to the surface of the body receives less radiation and therefore reduced damage. Tissues deeper in the body receive very few protons, so the dosage becomes almost undetectable. That's good news for the cancer sufferer and actually good news for all of us. But what's really cool is the heart behind all this technology. Some people say it's all about the money. In this case, I'm not sure. I've met and interviewed many cancer specialists they are absolutely passionate about what they do, even when it seems like an impossible battle. I genuinely believe that to work with something as massive as a gantry and to be this precise, you must love and care about what you do and how you do it every single day. How could you not? Millions, maybe even billions are spent before billions are earned. It takes hours and hours of research, trial and error, hardworking staffs, and finally, a hope that they will make treatment more effective and pleasant. And that's a great use of technology. I'll keep you updated on my mom. We don't know how much longer she'll be with us. It could be another month. It could be six months, maybe even five or 10 more years. That's what I'm hoping. But the one thing that I learned through all of this is just because somebody says that you have cancer, it is not a death sentence. If you like this podcast and you'd like to know more, or maybe you have a story to share with me, head over to commando.com. At the bottom of every page, there's a link that says, contact us. The Ask Kim button, that's me, and I'm the only one that will ever read your email. And if you did like this podcast, do me a favor, give us a great five-star review and a five-star rating, whether on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts, because maybe more people need to know about proton therapy. Maybe more cancer patients need to have hope, and we can give them that.